Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, this is Jason with Motive Wave. Welcome to today's webinar, Motive Wave's mobile app order flow tools. In this webinar, we'll be taking you through the upcoming mobile app and its order flow features. I'd like to thank you all for taking the time into your day to attend. Today's presentation will be approximately 25 to 30 minutes, and there will be a Q&A session at the end of the presentation. There should be a Q&A button on your Zoom controls where you'll be able to type in your questions and feedback. So go ahead and do that at any time, and we'll get to those at the end. Uh, this webinar recording will be posted to our YouTube page and or the video tutorial section on our website. If you're watching this webinar on YouTube, please like, share, and subscribe. And before we get into the content, I'll just go over a quick disclaimer. There is substantial risk of loss in trading commodity futures, options, stocks, equities, indices, cryptocurrencies, and foreign exchange products. Futures and options trading has large potential reward, but also large potential risk. You must be aware of these risks and be willing to accept them in order to invest in the markets. And please do not trade with money you can't afford to lose. We've posted CFTC rule 4.41 for you to read. And I want to mention that MotiveWave has a 14-day risk-free trial, and you can sign up at MotiveWave.com. All right, so let's just do a quick overview before we get started. Just want to mention that this presentation is an app preview, so this is not uh, necessarily the final product that will be released. Uh, we're currently beta testing, so there will undoubtedly be changes and new features added by the time we release this to the general public. The mobile app will be available for iOS and Android, and we will likely tie your desktop license to the mobile app, which will determine the features available to you. We have plans to release a free version as well, but it will likely have limited functionality. Because not all connections offer compatible APIs for mobile apps, uh, we will have a limited number of connections. To start, we're going to have Rhythmic, CQG, Binance, Kraken, Coinbase, TD Ameritrade, and Oanda. We're also considering interactive brokers, uh, which may come at a later date. Uh, most of the features discussed today will require historical tick data and or market depth, which is also known as level two. So these features uh, we would be limited to just the rhythmic and CQG connections that we have available now. The other connections do not have historical tick data or any meaningful amount of it. And although uh, we did just do a webinar on the new mobile app, uh, there was a memory leak issue which could cause unresponsiveness when using the volume imprint study or DOM. So I wasn't really able to touch on those areas. Uh, this has since been resolved. So we thought it'd be nice to demo the order flow features in a second presentation. Also note, uh, this time I will be using an Android emulator, which will emulate an Android tablet. So we'll have a little more screen real estate to display our charts versus the phone screen I used previously. Uh, if you're interested in joining the beta testing group, please stay tuned until the end of the presentation where I'll let you know how to request access to the app. So to start out, uh, we're gonna start out with the DOM or the depth of markets. So let's just switch over to that page now. Uh, so currently this is what the default DOM looks like on the mobile app. Uh, in the bottom toolbar, we have our instrument selector on the left side. And over here on the right side, we have an OCO button. So this can create an OCO order. So it'll be limit plus limit, limit plus stop, or stop plus stop. Next to that, we have the reset at bid and at ask columns. I'll touch on that in just a minute here. And if we want to recenter the DOM at any time, we can just double click the DOM table and it's gonna recenter that for us. If you'd like to access the DOM preferences, you can do so by clicking this gear icon here. And if you want to add or remove DOM columns, you can do so by clicking this plus icon in the bottom right corner. I won't go through all the DOM columns at this time, but if you're interested in what they are, you can check out some of the previous webinars posted on our YouTube channel that I've done. So let's start out by just making a few customizations to the DOM to see what it can do. So as we said, this is the default layout, which is not necessarily what I would like to see. So I'm just gonna do some customizations of how I would set it up. Uh, first of all, we have a combined bid ask column here. I would probably separate those. So I would probably add the bid 
and the ask columns. And then if I want to remove a column, this combined bid ask, I just select it here from the list and it's going to remove it. I also don't like to see my PL in a trade, uh, so I'm going to remove that. And if you want to reorder any of these columns, you just tap and drag and move them over. Uh, I would also probably move my volume column over to this side. And I would, I also like to look at the ask bid, or excuse me, the at bid and the at ask columns. Uh, so these columns will just show you the recent trades that are happening at the bid and at the offer. And if you'd like to resize any of the columns, you can just tap and drag on any of them here. I'm just going to shrink down these at bid and at ask columns. Um, some other columns that might be useful for you would be the bid delta and the ask delta. So these are just going to show you uh, whether contracts are being added or subtracted from the book. So these would be the pulling and stacking columns. So I'm just going to resize these to something a little bit smaller. And that looks all right for, for the amount of columns that I might want to look at. And as mentioned earlier, to reset the at bid and at ask, you just click this little icon here, and it's going to reset those recent trades at the bid and ask. So now we can go ahead and customize a little further uh, by going into the DOM preferences menu. And you can see we have plenty of options here, just like we have on the desktop. Um, I might reduce the row height just for this demonstration. Uh, let's knock that down to about 30. And I may not want to see the horizontal lines as well, so I can apply those changes. And you can see we have more columns showing now, so that's nice. I can jump back over to the dividers tab. I like the bid divider, but um, I also like having a divider at the high and the low of the day. So if I apply those changes and we go down to the low, we can see we have a divider here at the low. It just makes it very obvious. Back into the preferences on the price column, um, we have it centered to the right. I kind of prefer a center, so I'm going to do that. And then I also like having the session high low fill. So that's just going to uh, fill the background color of that column between the low and the high, this color here, which is a light gray. Everything else looks pretty good here. Uh, we have on the desktop, we have a last traded quantity LTQ column on its own, but in the mobile app, we've actually included it in the price column. I'm just going to remove it for now, apply these changes, and then we can see our session high low. Uh, fill there in the background. Uh, back in the preferences, if we look at the volume column, it's uh, displayed from the right hand side. I kind of like it going from the other way, from the left side, so I can go down the volume align, select left, and I believe the text align. I can also select left here as well. Everything else looks pretty good. Um, we have a value area showing, so we can apply those changes. And that looks not too bad. We can expand this column a little, a little more to see, to see a better volume profile. That looks good. All right, so now let's jump into the bid and ask columns. So right now, as you can see, we have the bid column, column aligned this way, and the ask column is aligned the same way which I like to have them opposite of each other. So let's just go ahead and change that. Uh, that is down at the ask, excuse me, the ask histogram align. If we change this to left, that should be good. And uh, since we're using a rhythmic connection, we also have market by order features available. So right now, uh, what that's gonna do is show you the individual orders uh, within the book. Um, I find this showing all of them to be not extremely useful for myself. So what I usually do is um, enable the MBO filter. And then I set this to something like uh, somewhere around 20-ish 20, 20 contracts on the ES, apply those changes. Now it's just going to show me any individual order that is 20 contracts or larger. 
I find this nice and useful to see uh, where some large players are, are showing their size and may want to get filled. So that looks all right, but I actually prefer a fill in the bid and ask columns as well. So we're going to go in, go back to the bid ask, and we're going to enable this bid column fill and the ask column fill. Apply those changes, and that looks a little bit better to my eye. We also have the bid delta and ask delta columns. Um, so we can set any number of settings here. Um, you know, we might want to, to choose a fill for those. Uh, so we can apply that. And it's just going to add a different color fill. That looks OK. It's a little bright for my taste, but it'll do for, for this presentation. Uh, and then next up, we have the at bid and at ask. So those are the recent trades that are being traded at the bid and at the offer. Uh, we can choose the reset interval here. So it's currently set to two and a half seconds. So if price moves away from that bid and ask level for two and a half seconds and comes back into it, it's just going to reset those numbers back to zero. Uh, everything else here looks pretty good. Bid ask counts we're not currently using. And then we can kind of customize the trade panel if we'd like. And I'll show you that uh, right now. So the trade panel, you can find just this little up arrow here. So you can place a trade in the DOM either using this trade panel. So you could buy market, sell market, uh, buy or sell, bid or ask. You can set your time and force. Uh, your quantity is set here. Uh, your account and then your position will show here. Uh, so you can, you can send trades directly from these buttons. Or you, you can also tap and hold in the bid, ask, or the price columns. So once you do that, tap and hold. It's just going to come up with a little context menu here where you can select the order type you'd like and then send the order. So as you can see, we have an extremely powerful DOM for a mobile application. Um, let's leave the DOM for now and let's head over to the chart. So uh, for the chart page, let's start off with some volume imprint uh, examples here. So the volume imprint study can be used to display a volume profile or a footprint or delta chart. So I'll just go through two popular examples. I'm just going to show you a daily volume profile and then a bid ask footprint. So to add a daily volume profile to this chart, we simply click the add study button down here in the bottom toolbar. And then we can go over to the order flow tab and then find our volume imprint study. Uh, our column one, we're going to set to profile since we want a daily volume profile. And the imprint count, we really only probably want to see three of those. And we're going to align that to the start of the bar. And let's just add this now to see what it looks like. Actually, before we do that, the most important part of adding the daily volume profile is setting the, the bar size for this volume imprint. So we need to go over to the options tab and select bar size, because by default, it's going to use the bar size of the chart, which is currently 15 minutes. So we select this, set it to one day, and now we can add it. And what it's doing now is just it's just going out to the rhythmic servers and requesting all that tick data. And we can see our volume profile here. We can go in and make any changes to it by double tapping on the study itself, or you can find the studies from this little menu. You just click this down arrow. Uh, you can click the volume imprint here, or you can, you can double tap it, and it's gonna bring up the settings. So for the display, you know, I won't go through all these settings. I have some other webinars that cover the volume imprint study. Since it's so close to the desktop, uh, those will be very useful. I'm just going to uh, remove this show op open close bar that we have. And I'm going to go over to the profile tab since we have a profile here. Um, we're going to leave the POC bar color, label font. All those labels are fine. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the value area. And I'm just going to change the bar color and turn off the range lines and the range fill. So we can go ahead, select update, and that's just going to update the study now. And we can see our profile here. 
Um, if we want, if it's too large for you, you can go over to the display tab and set a max width of say 150 pixels. And now it's gonna be a much smaller daily volume profile. And if we want to remove any study, we can just select it here and click the little trash icon. It's gonna remove it. Okay, so uh, next example I wanna do is a bid ass footprint, uh, uh, possibly with imbalances. So I don't necessarily want to see my bid, bid, excuse me, my bid ass footprint on a 15 minute chart. So I'm just, just gonna switch this to something like a five minute chart. And I'm going to increase the bar width a little. And then we're gonna add our volume imprint again. As you can see, you can find your recent studies added here. So we're just gonna select it from our recent list. And instead of a profile, we're gonna actually select the bid ask. Tick interval of one, 20 imprints is fine. Aligning it to the middle is also fine. We're going to remove the show open close. And we can go over to the bid ask tab. We want to show the fill. Uh, we're going to remove the point of control outline. So that just draws an outline around the point of control. Um, and everything else looks fine for now, except for we need to head over to the imbalances tab here. Enable the imbalance and then enable the ask font and the bid font and then click add. As you can see, we have our bid ass footprint chart here. We may want to remove the bars in the background since they can be a little distracting. We can do that by going to the chart preferences, which is this gear icon here. Uh, and then going over to the bar settings tab and setting this to no bars. We'll apply those changes. And then we can tap and drag along the time axis here to resize the bar width to something more manageable. And we can also remove the auto scale. So click the auto scale button here to remove it. And then we can kind of increase or decrease the amount of ticks that this chart uses, uh, the chart uses, excuse me. Okay, so that is the bid ask for footprint chart with imbalances. So the next uh, order flow feature I want to show is the order heat map and the big trades. So what I can do is select the volume imprint study and I can remove it. And I wanna add back some bars now. So I can go back into my chart preferences, go into my bar settings, and we can use something like the OHLC bars, apply these changes. And we also want to reduce the bar width as well. I also don't want to see the order heat map on a five minute chart. So I can select uh, the time right here in this scroll bar. I can go over to custom and then I could set this to say, I don't know, something like a five second or a one second or whatever you, whatever you like to see. Let's go with one second. And let's reduce the bar width a little bit there. Let's see where we're at for bar width. We're at a bar width of five, so four. Four might be good. And then let's add the order heat map study to the chart. So I can do that by clicking the add study button, going over to the order flow tab, and then selecting the order heat map. So the order heat map study will just display a background with a gradient of colors to show the market depth on the chart. So please note, in order to use this study to display anything, you'll need to have market depth or level two enabled for the instrument or exchange uh, that this, this study, or excuse me, that this instrument's on. Uh, MotiveWave uses the market depth to display a visual heat map of the current and past market depth levels. And knowing where these levels are can help pinpoint short-term entries and exits. So, so let's go ahead and add this now. Um, I'm just gonna use a standard blue to white color map. I'm gonna set my opacity to 100%, extend the latest DOM, and we can go ahead and add this to the chart. And we can also change the scaling of this chart by clicking and dragging on the price axis here. So we may wanna shrink that down a little bit. 
then also we can go back into the study settings and change a few of the options. So something like the min size filter. So this is going to filter out, you know, the bottom 50% of uh, book levels. I want to see all of them. So I'm actually going to reduce this down to zero because I want to see all of them. And then this max size filter here. So what this is going to do, if I set this to something like 95 I prefer something like around 95%. So it's going to take the five, the top 5% of levels and combine them into the same color. So what that's going to do is it's going to stop, uh, say, a massive uh, bid or a massive offer from kind of skewing the color gradient um, of the heat map. So we can go ahead and update that now. And in my eyes, that looks a little better. Okay, so... Um, Another thing we can add to this chart is actually the big trade study. So that's just going to show you the actual trade executions on this chart. So we can go ahead and select the add study menu, go over to the order flow tab and select big trades. Um, since we're using rhythmic, we can actually use the MBO and it's just going to, uh, excuse me, it's going to aggregate the orders by the order ID number, which is kind of nice. And we can choose a min trade size that we want to show. So generally, I like to, I don't like to look at all the trades myself. I'd like to look at uh, trades that are a little bit larger. So we can try with something like uh, 25 contracts or larger. And we can add this. And that looks all right. Since the cash market is closed, we're not going to have as much volume. Uh, but as you can see, it's just going to add any any large trades, 25 contracts or higher onto the chart. And we can see the resting liquidity here at uh, 37.50, we have a fairly large bid. And at 37.57.50, we have a fairly, fairly large offer there. So in summary, these two studies combined are very informative for trade entry. Uh, they can showcase where big players are positioned in the market. And these are areas where re reversals could occur, uh, which is nice to see for your short-term uh, short traders out there. All right, so that covers the order heat map and the big trades. Let's jump over quickly and touch on the time and sales. Okay. So the time and sales just displays the recent trades that can be used to highlight you know, large, large trades. It can also be used to get a feel for the tempo of the market or by how quickly the trades are going off. Um, also the time in sales is considered, you know, it's considered basic functionality, but I just want to point out that we can actually use the market by order aggregation feature. So the trades you see in the time in sales or the actual uh, trade sizes, not broken up into little one lots. So we can do that by jumping over into the time and sales preferences, the little gear icon down here. And we can go over to the filter tab. We can select the aggregate by order. And then we can actually set a min trade size, which is nice. So on a mobile app, the time and sales may not be as important or may not be used as much, but it might be more useful if you just want to see large trades coming through. So you can enable this uh, min trade size here. And we can set this to something like you know, 25 lots. We can apply the change. Now it's only going to show us trades that are 25 lots or higher. And then another thing we can do is we can customize the colors. Say if we didn't like these colors, uh, we could go over to the colors tab here and we could go ahead and change the trades that happen at the offer. So we could change the color to something like uh, green might be a decent color to show there. So we can select OK. And we may also want to change the color of trades that happen at the bid. So those would be aggressive sellers. We can select at bid. We may want to make this a little brighter. So I can go ahead, select kind of a different red color there. And then maybe we also want to reduce the row height so we can see more rows. And I can apply those changes. And we can see them here. OK, so that pretty much covers most 
uh, excuse me, covers most of the order flow tools that are used by the majority of our users. And you, you might be thinking to yourself that this is all very similar to the desktop app. And I guess that's kind of the point is we want a seamless experience between the desktop and the mobile. So from the DOM, volume imprint, order heat map, big trades, time and sales examples we had today, uh, you can see that it is an extremely powerful mobile application on par with many desktop apps. So let's, let's talk briefly about the beta testing group here. So we plan to roll out the app to a limited number of users for testing, which we've already started. Uh, we'd like these users to test, report bugs, and provide feedback. And if this interests you, uh, you can email us at support at motivewave.com and use the subject line testing group. Please also include the email address associated with your Motivewave license key and the mobile operating system you plan to test with. So that'll be either iOS or Android. Uh, you will need an account at one of the currently supported fees. So that will be CQG, Rhythmic, Binance, Coinbase, Kraken, TD Ameritrade, or Rwanda. And we ask that you please report bugs as you normally would. And that would be by sending an email to support at motivewave.com, along with as much information as you can to reproduce the issue. And inclusion of pictures or screen recordings are very much appreciated. We also really welcome feedback on our features and the usability of the, of the app. So please don't hesitate to reach out to us at support.motivewave.com with any feature requests or feedback. And in the coming weeks, we may decide to send out a survey to the beta test group for more feedback. So if you'd please uh, fill that out, it would help uh, make the mobile app much better. And if or when you're selected for the testing group, uh, you will be emailed instructions on how to install the Google Firebase app. The Google Firebase app installation is mandatory as it allows us to grant you access to the app. It allows you to install the MotiveWave app and install any updates. So please follow the directions carefully in the email. For Android users, uh, the directions are pretty straightforward, but for iOS users, there are a couple extra steps that may cause confusion. So again, please read those directions carefully. And you also need a Google account in order to sign into the Firebase app. So just keep that in mind. Uh, and once the Firebase app is installed, what it's going to do is it's going to send a message to us to request access. And approving this access is a manual process. So please be patient as it won't be instantaneous. It may take a day or so. And just to note, the Firebase app is only needed for beta testing. So once we release version 1.0, it will no longer be necessary. All right, so that concludes the presentation. Um, let's take a look at some questions. If you have any questions, you can type them into the Q&A uh, box in Zoom. Okay, so we have a question here. It says, hello, the direction of the bid as histogram. Can you change it? It looks strange having them go the same direction. Yeah, I think <laughs> I'm kind of the same way as you as I didn't like them uh, facing the same direction. And that's actually something that will probably change as a default in the future. I'm not too keen on that myself. And I think I, I believe I showed you that uh, just through the DOM preferences here on the bid ask tab, and then you can change the text align here, and then the histogram align can be changed below. Okay, it says hopefully you add TradeStation to the brokers. Um, that is something that we can look into you for, or excuse me, for you, Mark. Thanks for the response, Mark. Yeah, we'll look into I'll add Trade Station to see if that's something that can be added in the future. So Michael says, how do we stop the after hours uh, price data from showing up on charts? That's a really good question. Um, so what you can do is long press on the chart background. That's going to bring up this context menu here. And then all you do is select this show regular session. So if I select this now, 
uh, I don't know if this is, yeah, let me see here. Let's go back to a five minute chart. Oh, of course, I'm going to load all that data on the five minute. Let's see if I can remove this quickly. So long press, and then you can select show extended data if it's showing the RTH session. Or if we have the extended session showing, click and hold, and then select show regular session. Uh, is this going to be recorded? Yes, this is going to be recorded. We will uh, likely post this to our YouTube channel in the, in the coming days. Can oh, William ask, can you show an example of the TPO study? Sure. Uh, let's see here. We can just go add a study. And let's just search for TPO. Time frame we're going to set to one day, tick interval one, sub interval 30 minutes. Um, how many to display? Uh, let's just display five. Use historical bars. Let's click add. Let's go on something like a 15 minute chart maybe. Now let's do something a little, little longer than 15 minutes. Let's do one hour. So there we have the TPO. And then if you wanted to say zoom in to see any of the letters, well, you'd have to go, you'd have to change your scaling method out of auto scale. You go out of auto scale. Then you can kind of zoom in a little more to see the letters. Oops. Hopefully that answers your question. We do have TPO for the mobile app. So William asks, um, I'd like to know how to use a mobile version. Yeah, so just email us support at motivewave.com with the subject line testing group. And we will get that uh, email sent over to you within a day or two. Anzor asks, will there be double connections? I'm currently using IB for execution and DX feed for level two. Um, not currently. I don't foresee that being included right off the bat if we do at all. Uh, so no, that that won't be that won't be possible right now. But it's something that we can look into for the future because I know that's a nice feature to have uh, for the desktop app. Uh, Dennis asks, "How do you remove a study from the chart?" So that's also a really good question. So what you can do, uh, there's a couple ways. Uh, this little uh, down arrow right here is gonna show you that we have one study in the chart. You can tap it here. You can uh, just single tap the study that you want and then click on the little trash icon. You can move this thing around. So it's gonna allow you to edit the, the settings or trash it. What you, you, what you can also do is tap and hold on the background and then you can bring up the object viewer where you'll be able to see you have the TPO and you could trash that straight from here and remove it from the chart. Good question, Dennis. Uh, and John asked, do you plan on adding option chains? Ah, that's a really good question. Um, that isn't something we've talked about a whole lot, but uh, why don't I add a feature request for that? That that is a very good question. So it's it's likely not something that'll be out in version one, uh, but we will definitely look into this for you, John. Okay. Uh, any more questions? Thanks, Ryan. Ryan just says pretty good functionality for a mobile app. Yeah, I, I think so too. I don't know if there's anything else out here right now that can that has this kind of functionality for order flow features anyways. 
uh, it's very close to our desktop app. Carlos, yeah, thanks, thanks, Carlos. Carlos also says he's impressed. Um, yeah, I'm also impressed. Thanks, Carlos. Uh, William asks, is IQ feed on the list for data? Um, another good question. Uh, it's not currently on the list. Um, the, the current IQ feed API that we use, it, it wouldn't be possible to implement, but I believe IQ feed has some other API types that we might be able to lose, or excuse me, use. Um, so I'm just going to add that one to the list as well. Um, so that's something that we can definitely look into. Thanks, William. Okay, that looks like all the questions now. Um, so once again, I'll just go over this. Uh, if you'd like to be a part of the beta testing group, just send us an email, support at motivive.com, subject line testing group. Uh, your email address is associated with your license key. And let us know the operating system because we have to uh, send out a separate email, whether it's iOS or Android with uh, different directions. Uh, and yeah, thank you everyone for attending the presentation today. And if we didn't get in your questions answered, uh, email support at motivewave.com. Thanks for joining and have a great day.